All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the iFlight Nazgul 5 HD, and I got the 4S version here because I got the original analog 4S version about a year ago. And I just want to show you these two side by side. So here's the analog version. And it was almost exactly a year ago that I reviewed this guy, and uh, I haven't flown it much lately, but it still flies great. It has all the same general parts, but I'll show you what's been upgraded from the analog version to the now DJI digital version with the Caddx Vista system. And uh, again, I went with the 4S setup here because I had a 4S setup on the analog version. So I wanted to sort of compare what the 4S versions were like. Um, I will link this video for the analog version down in the description if you guys want to check it out from about a, a year ago. But let's just talk about what the differences are. And mainly, they have uh, upgraded the frame and obviously added the digital system here, the Vista in the back with the different antenna. It's not the standard Caddx antenna. They have their own iFlight branded antenna here. It's a little bit not necessarily on the shorter side, but they have this SMA adapter here, so it's a little bit more securely mounted and it's on a TPU um, mount here, so it has a little bit of flexibility and give in case of crashing. But like I said, the electronics are pretty much the same. Uh, F4 flight control, these are all the success dash E parts 45 amp 4 in 1 EC, also the E part, and then the motors, the 20 Zing E's. So these are all the um, E, I guess it stands for economical or budget 2207, 2750 KV motors and the same iFlight Nazgul props here. So the props, the motors, uh, the ESC flight controller are the same between the analog version from a year ago and the new version, the digital version now. And of course, they've changed the frame. This frame has been updated a couple times since last year. So this is now the... XL5 V version 5 frame. I think the uh, analog version is on the version 3 frame, but in order to, uh, I guess, accommodate the additional weight of the digital system, they beefed up the frame a bit. These arms are a little bit tapered now, so a little bit thicker here at the base and a little bit thinner at the, the root over here, so it seems to also, I think it helps with the motor vibrations. You have these uh, little motor wire guards here, or like little tunnels for the motor wires, but they're probably going to break if you crash really hard and the prop spin hit those. So there's kind of more, I, I don't know, I, I would prefer just using like tape or something like that there, but those are there just to prevent the wires from getting cut. These may break off in a crash. Five millimeter arms. The plates here for the sandwich are three millimeters now instead of two millimeters. Now, the version, the, the one I got here is kind of an early version, so I think that this top plate here is supposed to be three millimeters as well, but this is two millimeters, so all the plates are supposed to be from going from two millimeters to three millimeters, and the height of the standoff here uh, between the top plate and the bottom plate is now 28 millimeters instead of 32 or 33 millimeters in the analog version, so they've kind of uh, brought the the, the CG down a little bit where the battery lies more in line with the prop to give it a little bit better CG feel. And I uh, believe that's all the changes. There's actually, there's some other cosmetic things. There's um, a hole down here for the capacitor. So you can see that. I'm not exactly sure what functionality that has, but that's, that's there. I think it's in case uh, of a crash, it, it, it maybe allows it to not bounce off the bottom plate perhaps, not sure. There is a TPU part here with an LED behind it that lights up when you power on. Um, that's just a cosmetic thing, uh, more for looks. And they have all the, you know, your typical iFlight TPU parts. You got your um, motor bumpers here along with uh, guards on the bottom so that you're not scratching up the screws. So this is new for this version. This used to be only on the higher end Sedora line. Now they're bringing this on the Nazgul line. You got the TPU port back here for the, obviously for the antenna and to, to guide your XT60 through and then you have your crossfire uh, receiver here where you can have different receiver versions or just use a DJI controller if you have that. Um, this particular one has the crossfire uh, receiver version and this is kind of the setup that I'm kind of um, leaning towards now. 
if you are looking to have the best control link and the best video link, then go with video on the DJI and go with Crossfire for control. Um, yeah, you, you're not going to have any strange issues where the, the control link kind of um, gets glitchy when you're flying around as if you happen to fly in an area where the DJI system has a little bit more trouble. Uh, the Crossfire will generally be uh, glitch free no matter what. Um, you may have glitching in the video, but your control link will be totally fine on Crossfire most of the time. And over here in the front, of course, you got your Caddx uh, camera or the DJI camera. Uh, for your digital FPV system, and then they have this uh, mount on here. This is for the Hero 8. I believe other cameras are also available. This is a uh, separate part. I think you have to buy that um, separately, and it's an extra cost. I think it's like $15 for this. Pretty nice TPU part here, you know, multicolored. But, um, you know, now that we have this um, digital system, it's quite a bit heavier, especially with the beefed up frame and everything. So let's just compare the weight and let me show you what this weighs. This is no battery, just with the GoPro mount and no GoPro. So it's coming at 443 and a half grams. The battery I flew with is, this is the one I recommend, something along the lines of a 1550. Uh, and I've been testing out these new uh, Owl line batteries. They're pretty good. Uh, I'd say they're pretty comparable to GMB batteries or tattoos. And they're available at Race Quads and being good in much other places. But with this battery, now we're coming at 622 grams, so getting up there in weight, and of course, a Hero 8, add that as well. And we're hitting uh, about 750 grams all up weight, and with this heavier weight, they did tune this, um, at least for 4S, on these Nazgul props, which are kind of not, you know, super wide in terms of the blade. I would recommend going with a different prop and switching out your tune if you want a little bit more torque on the bottom end. Um, these these, these Nazgul props are probably more for these uh, higher KV motors, so it's going to be a trap. I didn't fly it on other props, so I can't really tell you uh, if it's going to be a benefit or not, because these higher KV motors can uh, draw a lot of amps on a higher pitch prop, so be aware that you may have much shorter flight times. So this is the analog version, just to show you what we're dealing with here. And I, I believe I flew on a 1300, but just, just for reference, I'm going to use the same battery. So without the battery, just a GoPro mount, this is a Session 5 mount. It's 374 grams, and then throw in the 1550 here. It's like 550, and then we'll throw on a uh, Session 5. It's uh, about 625, so it's about 125 grams difference in weight between the analog version and the digital version. So just like all of their um, iFlight quads, um, this is also available in a 6S version as well with a different KV motor. I don't know offhand what that motor KV is. Um, in terms of flight times, I was expecting less flight time on this because it was such a high KV motor and it's running up for us, but I got pretty good flight time on, on the 1550 Outline battery, so uh, you, I can safely say that 4S is, is going to be fine, I think, unless you're really, really pushing the throttle. Uh, if you're going, um, you know, full throttle a lot and l pushing the quad really hard, these higher KV, 27 KV motors are going to drain the battery pretty quick. So just be aware of that compared to, say, a 6S setup. I, th I think, um, you know, on a 6S setup, you're going to have less voltage sag at the end, at the, uh, overall, and at the end, uh, the, ba the battery will hold its voltage longer towards the end of the flight. So those are mainly the differences between 4S and 6S. Of course, if you don't have any 6S batteries and you just want to stick with your 4S batteries, then, you know, obviously you want to go with 4S. But if you're just starting out, maybe get a, the 6S version and maybe start off with some 4S batteries and move up to 6S. Or you can just put a throttle cut on the flight controller and just run a 6S battery if you just want to start off with 6S. So it's kind of, you know, the whole 4S versus 6S debate. Um, <laughs> yeah, applies here as well. So in terms of the flight characteristics, it did feel a little bit on the heavier side, but these are pretty powerful motors. So it didn't feel that bad. Uh, it, I thought it flew totally fine. Now, for some of you guys that do a lot of freestyle, you probably are going to be not too happy with the 
uh, heavy weight of the total combined weight of everything here. Um, it's going to be subjective. Some of you are, are going to like that, where you're going to be able to have be able to have a lot of weight to throw around, or some of you guys are not going to like that, where you want a lighter quad for more of uh, more of a nimble feel in terms of your acro flights. So, you know, it's, it's again it's subjective and personal preference. You know, whether or not you're going to like that additional weight or not. It didn't really bother me too much. It's just that this at 125 grams heavier than the analog version does definitely feel different in the air it it just you know it not quite as nimble it, you know it, it, it you can definitely feel the weight and the when you throw it around it does carry its momentum more um one of the benefits though is when it's windy it's you don't feel anything it the wind doesn't do anything to this because it is quite a bit heavier than the analog version so if you are flying around in a lot of windy conditions maybe the extra weight will be beneficial to you anyway that's all i gotta say about this guy i you know like i said i enjoyed the analog version of the nazgul 5 when it first came out and this one it doesn't disappoint as well uh, if you're looking for things like this is quite like their Nazgul is like their budget line for my flight, and I think Sidor is like their sort of mainstream line. So I think these are the Nazgul's come in a little bit less cost than the Sidor, but you know, in terms of like flight performance, pretty similar. So if you want to save a few dollars, the Nazgul line is definitely a way to go to save a little bit of money. Um, anyway, here's the uh, flight footage, and you know, let me know if you guys have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Now the tune is pretty much on. I don't see anything weird. That's yeah, uh, pretty good right out of the box. No modifications. It does feel heavier than the original Nazgul 5, of course. Carrying a little extra weight. It's the same, I believe it's the same power setup as on the the other one I have, the analog. I think it's got the same motors and everything. I'll have to double check that. Yeah, it's super smooth. No prop wash at all. I'm not so sure I like the uh, props in view on the DJI camera. Hopefully there's no props in view on the GoPro footage. We'll see. Uh, some of you guys don't care about that. Oh, there's some people here walking around. Let's take a little look around. Who's walking around here? Got a runner there. Got a couple walking over there. A couple people walking over here. Oh, there's a lot of people here. So a little bit of wind is picking up here and I'm just kind of idling around and it is getting a little bit of shaking. Oh, we 
yeah, the wind is definitely getting worse. I'll try and stay in the grass here. Ooh, almost hit that tree. It's got good recovery power, even though it's pretty heavy with a GoPro 8 on here. Uh, bring it a little closer here so you guys can hear what it sounds like when you're doing flippy floppies. Now, the angle of the camera is kind of funny. Yeah, the tune the tune is pretty good. It's just that now it's getting some prop wash because I think it's in some wind. So it's not perfect. Uh, even at towards the end of the battery here, it's still got plenty of pop. But really good control. There's a bird. Anyway, that's a pretty decent first flight. Yeah, it just has a little bit of bobbles. I think it's mostly because of the wind. The tune's not quite as locked in as the one on the Sector 5 V3. Anyway, about six minutes of flight, just kind of cruising around here, not really doing a whole lot of stuff. Let's, let's burn off the rest of this battery. Look at that, just gets a lot of, a lot of hang time. <laughs> 